Welcome to another Unnecessary Computer Things. Today we are going to be looking at the first program in a book called 30 Programs for the Zinc Sinclair ZX 81K. Uh, so as you're watching this, we're, we're already in progress. I already filled out the first screen. The total program is 40 lines long. Uh, if you actually typed it out in uh, into a text file, it'd be about 800-ish bytes. If you actually save it to tape, it's actually 533. And part of that is just how those commands are actually getting chunked on the screen. Uh, one of the fun things about using the ZX80 either in actual real life keyboard mode or actually typing it in an emulator is all of the commands or most of the commands are mapped to individual keys and they are context sensitive if you can see you have ls sometimes and then you have l sometimes and and then sometimes k so those are different keyword are different typing modes one is like keyword and like if you have a K if you have a K showing as your cursor then if you type a, let's say a K into the keyboard that results in a let uh, so you really can you can't actually type out the statement the reserve keywords for this uh, in this environment, you have to actually use the key that's mapped to that command. Um, and then on top of that, uh, the parentheses are actually mapped to the I and the O. And uh, the multiplication is, multi the asterisk is mapped to the P. Uh, so so there's there are only like... Uh, 40 keys on the keyboard and then you have to use a shift key or a symbol shift key to get the others to work and actually and for the, I guess for the ZX80 itself it, it was just the shift key um, and then the context determines the rest some of the later clones have two different keys one is a shift and one is a symbol shift. I know like for the Jupiter, Jupiter Ace uh, and for or the, uh, the Brazilian clones, they, they have potentially an extra key for that. So like I said, it's 40 lines long. It's somewhat slow to type on this just because you can't just straight up type it. Um, but you can see uh, a little bit of a little bit of distinction between this and other 8-bit and later basics that use line numbers. One is that go to is two words. I don't know that all that too many basics use go to as two different words. Uh, it really is one symbol though in in terms of like memory, um, and then. You notice the let a keyword even even some of the early like the the earlier TRS-80 and Commodore Basics which are Microsoft Basic you let was allowed but it was optional uh, here it's absolute an absolute necessity because otherwise you don't escape out of the like the command mode. Uh, another thing that you notice and I, I have only notice this on the Brazilian clone ROMs, uh, but there's a diagonal screen wipe whenever you, whenever you have to refresh or anything like that. Another thing you'll notice is that the listings actually showing up on the screen 
believe there's a little bit of trickery in using video RAM for temporary storage of the program and memory. One, one actually interesting thing about the way the Sinclair ZX, ZX series works uh, with their basic editor though is that if you notice that caret on line 60 up there uh, you can actually go into an edit mode and scroll back through uh, those pages. Now you can cursor in like a Commodore VIC-20 or something you can actually cursor around on program listings that are on the screen do some edits on that line number and then hit enter and it will actually um, commit that new update to, to the program but you can actually scroll back through now one of the th one of the challenges with scrolling back through is if you notice how the refresh happens well you get one of those refreshes for every scroll you go back so it is pretty uh, I almost prefer the Commodore means just because it it's a lot quicker to get to those line numbers and list them versus having to have that have it scroll back and flash but it is it is a kind of neat uh, and convenient feature to actually be able to look back through your listings Now I'm, I'm going to do a FIC20 version of this. Uh, one, <clears throat> one of the things that's different in the VIC-20 version is some of the character codes. Like if you look at line 220 and 230, it's setting specific characters. It's like a reverse character and a quote character. Uh, I can actually use like the spade and the heart for that. Uh, another is we're look we're looking for a specific keyboard code or key code for the input a string. Um, we're just going to look for that actual string. And now we're running the program. The way this works is you're actually putting the source and the destination slots in and then it does a leapfrog and you can leapfrog over something or you can move to an adjacent space. Uh, I'm, I didn't think about how to actually go about this in the, in when I ran this. So this is just a lot of me trying uh, different combinations. And obviously you can't go from five to seven because that's not in uh, five to four to six as well. So you, it does actually account for can you move to a space uh, that's occupied and what it's doing is it's looking for it's looking to make sure that in this case the array that's holding this these nine slots that array has to be zero and in Sinclair if you have if you're trying to print a zero it just ends up printing a space in keyboard code zero if you do that in VIC-20, it will actually, if that's a null character, just like a lot of other uh, environments, and it'll actually not print a printable character at all. So you'll end up not moving, advancing a space out in the cursor. So I actually had to substitute that logic in for a space on the VIC-20 version. As you can see, I'm very bad at this game. But there's no randomness to this. It, it's a specific layout. So once you actually learn how to play this game, it's pretty much, it's, it's done. Although it's a puzzle game and maybe you don't remember the whole algorithm behind the puzzle. So that's possibly something that will save you from being completely bored with this game for very long. Uh, I will say though this, like I said, this is like eight hundred some characters. It's forty lines of code. 
and actually on the tape because of those symbols compressed down. It's only 533 bytes on tape. So this is a fairly efficient little program and it, it does a lot considering I, I, I actually got this book because I couldn't imagine what interesting things you could even do within the space of 1K. I had, we had a short time, a TRS-80 in our house, a Model 1 with, um, I think, less than 4K, and then, of course, the VIC-20 emulator. VIC-20 itself has less than 4K, but that gives you a lot more room to do things than strictly 1K. But this is this has been interesting, and once you finish here, you just press zero. Thanks for watching.